When you're looking at a place to move, it's critical to get the full picture. So if you're considering whether Erie, Colorado is a viable option, you're gonna need all the info. Let's do that right now. Make sure you watch this all the way through because at the end, you'll find out why Erie is one of the more affordable and luxurious suburbs on the northern side of Denver. This is Life on the Front Range. Let's get started. Okay, so Erie, Colorado is a small suburb of Denver, located on the northern side, just half an hour from both Boulder and Denver. It has a population of around 30,000 people, and that's expected to increase over the coming years. The median age in Erie is around 37 years old. 86% of the properties are owner-occupied, thus only 14% of the residents are renters. You'll understand why in a second. At the time of this video, the median home price for a single-family home in Erie is fluctuating around the $705,000 mark. While if you're looking for a townhome or condo, the past six month average is around $485,000. The reason for such variability in the graph is due to a low number of sales. Townhomes and condos aren't very common in Erie. They are building more as we speak. However, the volume of that type of property is pretty low. Thus, it's at risk for quite a spread. So Erie, Colorado sits just a bit from the Front Range, which means that a commute to the mountains is necessary. You get a beautiful perspective of the Front Range, but also some 13,000 footers and 14,000 footers off in the distance that can be seen from literally anywhere in Erie. This makes for an amazing outdoor experience. Inside the town itself, there are several locations to get out and enjoy the Colorado outdoors. One worth mentioning is the Coal Creek Trail, which is a 15 mile long biking and running trail that parallels Coal Creek. From Erie, you can take the trail south to some beautiful open areas, and then if you continue far enough, you'll go in to the neighboring towns like Lafayette, Loisville, ultimately ending in Superior. There are both paved and gravel sections, but taking the trail in sections is a fantastic option instead of necessarily committing to a full 15 mile hike one way. But let's say you're looking for just a bit more of a workout. Well, then I'd recommend taking your mountain bike over to the single lane in Sunset East open space. This park is located right smack dab in the center of the overall town area, but is situated on a hillside that offers you incredible views of the Front Range. As someone who has been there personally multiple times, it's honestly one of the best views you can find in Erie. But if you're not necessarily looking for trails, more so open spaces, Erie is filled with parks and other locations to enjoy the outside. Erie Commons has a fantastic community park with baseball fields, soccer fields, a skate park, and a community center. And just north of Old Town Erie, is a park known as Reliance Park that also features a dog park section called the Boneyard, which is one of my dog's personal favorite locations. A little side note here in case you're not aware, backyards in Erie and the surrounding towns are not necessarily the largest. The primary reason I'd argue is because of water. And so if you're used to having your pet run around in your backyard, when you move here, I'd recommend capitalizing on these open areas. And there are several. But now if golf is your thing, there's a wonderful course located in Southern Erie called the Colorado National Golf Club. It is a fantastic public course that provides you incredible views of the Front Range while you're working on your short game. Or maybe if you're like me, you're spending the afternoon trying to get out of the sand trap. Now these are just a few locations in Erie, but we also have to talk about the fact that Erie is located close to other suburbs and towns that provide great outdoor locations as well. One main location I stress is Boulder, of course, because there is so much to do there. Check out a couple other videos of mine where I talk a bit more in depth about Boulder. Honestly, I could talk for 15 minutes straight, but for the sake of time, I'd recommend checking these out. Definitely something to watch after this. So the next point of discussion is about the job market and commute from Erie. Why I'm grouping these two together is because Erie, Colorado is known either directly or indirectly as a bedroom community. Erie is being built up as we speak. Now it's been around for decades, I'm not implying that this is a new town, but the overall size of the town continues to grow with newer neighborhoods coming up every year. As a result, there's not a lot of industry and job opportunities with within the town itself. And since it's close to places like Boulder or Denver, a lot of people commute there for work with about a quarter of the residents working from home. And with the commute to either location taking roughly half an hour, it's obvious why people choose Erie as a spot to live. It's just far enough outside of the urban environment where you're not feeling too claustrophobic. However, not too rural where you can't get access to the city or any type of shop or commercial area that you need. One thing I'll mention though is traffic. Obviously heading into Denver, 
you're gonna hit traffic. That kind of goes without saying. It's basically a natural law at this point. But going into Boulder, you're also gonna experience some traffic, depending on the time of day. Now, one reason for this, despite the fact that it's just an increased volume of traffic on the roads, is also the density of the roads. A few of the main lines into Boulder coming from the east are no more than two lane roads. So jam pack a ton of cars coming into the city and cross through a few towns like Lafayette and Louisville, you're bound to have a bit of stop and go. Something to keep in mind. But now, as I mentioned before, the median price of homes in Erie, Colorado is a bit on the pricier side, especially compared to the greater Denver area. 705,000 dollars is quite a bit and it's a bit more expensive compared to other towns within boulder county like longmont colorado but here is where i think erie stands out the price per square foot erie has the lowest price per square foot compared to other towns within Boulder County, coming in at around $222 per square foot, even compared to other places like Longmont, Colorado, which is close to $257 per square foot, it's obvious Erie's more affordable. Now let me paint a picture here to clarify. So Erie's price per square foot is around $222, and Longmont's is $257. Now with Erie's median home price being $705,000, Longmont has a six month average at around $610,000. I'm doing that due to the variability on the graph. That means that the expected median home size of a property in Erie is around 3,175 square feet, whereas in Longmont, it's 2,373 square feet. That means Erie's homes are expected to be around 34% larger than those found in Longmont. Now, maybe around 2,400 square feet for a house is fine with you, but it comes at a price of $610,000. A 2,400 square square foot home in Erie, based on its price per square foot, would only cost around $526,000. Now again, that's rough math, and I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to go out and find a property like that perfectly. There's a lot more factors involved. But what I'm trying to show you is that you're technically getting more house for your dollar in Erie compared to these other towns in Boulder County. And since Erie is being built up, they're a lot newer. So now if I've piqued your interest about Erie, Colorado, what I recommend doing now is a bit more research. So check out this video here, where you can get a bit more of a boots on the ground experience of Erie and see what the town actually looks like. I think you'll find it useful. This is Life on the Front Range, I'll see you there.